In this video, I'm going to show you how to download version 17.3 of the Juniper VSRX software and import it into GNS3. Now that we've made those changes, we can start up the devices in our topology and open up consoles to them. What you'll notice is that on the SRX, we see booting Juniper Linux, loading Linux, and then we get this error, failed to access MSR. At this point, you just need to wait. Be patient. If you did change the console to VNC and then restarted the device, you would notice more output on the screen. But at this point, you simply need to wait. And notice we get this message, KVM, no hardware support. We see some information and then we see the device booting up. So essentially, the SRX is gonna boot and then it's gonna reboot. You just need to wait for the SRX to go through a boot process. Now again, let me warn you, this can take a long time. Notice here, automatic reboot in progress. It could take 30 minutes or even 60 minutes for it to go through the full boot up process. You just need to be patient and wait. So what I would suggest you do at this point, if it's taking a long time to boot, is go and get a coffee, go and have lunch, go and do something and just wait till you see the login prompt. It's gonna take it a long time to boot up and then enable the various interfaces on the SRX. We want to get to the point where we have gigabit zero slash zero slash zero and gigabit zero slash zero slash one available on the SRX. Remember that even though we've got gigabit zero slash zero slash two here, the interface that we'll see on the SRX is not that interface. So some more output is now displayed. Again, simply wait for the boot process to complete. I'm gonna speed up the video at this point so that you don't have to wait for a long time for the boot process to complete. But again, the amount of time that it takes for your device to boot will depend on your CPU and RAM. So it may be fairly quick, but it may take a long time. Based on my experience, I suggest that you wait at least 30 minutes to 60 minutes for the device to become available. You may need to wait longer depending on how powerful your computer is. We've been told that the configuration is loading. We see an error now about the configuration file. We told that it's activating factory configuration. Again, you simply need to wait for this process to complete. The device generates public and private keys. And after a while, we get a login prompt. Again, the amount of time that it takes to get to this point really depends on your PC. Wait 30 minutes to 60 minutes if necessary. My boot process didn't take that long, but again, this depends on your hardware. Login with username root. There's no password by default. So simply log in with username root. Again, this initial process will be slow, but after a while, you'll see a root prompt and we can use the command CLI to open a command line interface. Initially, once again, it may be very slow. If necessary, leave the device for 30 to 60 minutes to boot up, but we eventually see a root prompt and we can use the command show chassis FPC pick status. And what you wanna see is that slot zero is online and your pick zero is online. If those aren't showing online, that means you'll have a problem. You won't see your gigabit 000 interface 
and Gigabit 001 interface. If you don't see a PEC, you may have incorrectly configured the device. You must set this to VMX Net 3. So make sure that you've configured the network interface type correctly. If you don't see both of these online and you don't see your gigabit interfaces, it means you have a problem. And the most likely cause is that you haven't configured this interface type properly. You may also have to set your virtual CPUs and your RAM to at least four gig and four virtual CPUs. Okay, so my device is now successfully booted and I can now configure it per my previous videos. So what I'm gonna do here is essentially configure the device to connect to the internet, as well as allow the network automation container to access the internet. I've put the configuration below this video. First thing I'm gonna do is set system root authentication. And in this example, I'll use plain text passwords. So set your device password, and then I'm gonna set the system host name to GNS3 VSRX1, set system name server to Google, set system domain name to gns3.com, set system services SSH, and then I'm gonna commit the configuration. Now in my example, I found that I need to configure both interfaces manually. In my example, I didn't get IP addresses from the NAT cloud. So what I did is set my interfaces, gigabit 001, unit, and that should be gigabit ethernet 001, unit zero, family will be inet, in other words, IP version four, address will be 192.168.122.2 slash 24. Set interfaces gigabit ethernet zero slash zero slash zero, unit zero, family, inet, and the address here will be 10.1.1.254 slash 24. So that's the inside interface. I'm gonna commit those changes. What I'm also gonna do is set a static route. I need to edit routing options first to do that. And then I'm gonna set static route and I'll specify a default route with a next hop of 192.168.122.1 and then I'll commit to those changes. So I've configured an IP address on gigabit 001, as well as gigabit 000. So ping 10, 1.1.254. I can ping my inside or trusted interface, ping 192.168.122.2. I can ping my untrusted interface, at this point, I can't ping the NAT cloud. What I'm gonna do now is configure trusted and untrusted interfaces. So I'll configure gigabit zero slash zero slash zero as the trusted interface, and gigabit zero slash zero slash one as the untrusted interface. I'm gonna configure some NAT rules on the interfaces and then I'll specify source and destination IP addresses. And I'll enable a NAT on the device and then commit my changes. While that's committing, I'm then gonna copy some configuration to permit multiple protocols such as ping, HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH on the trusted interface and then I'm gonna do something similar on the untrusted interface. 
HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, Telnet, and DHCP. I'm then gonna enable the web interface on both the trusted and untrusted interface. And I'm gonna configure a self-generated certificate for the web management interface. And then I'm gonna commit the changes. Once those changes are committed, we should hopefully be able to ping devices in our network. What I'm gonna do now is configure the network automation container. I'm gonna edit Etsy network interfaces and configure the device with a static IP address and default gateway being the SRX and I'll configure a DNS server as Google. So cat Etsy network interfaces. There's our IP address configuration. What I'm gonna do now is turn off the device, start it up again, and open up a console to the device. So ifconfig shows us the IP address of the device, ping 10111, can ping itself, Let's see if it can ping the SRX. Now again, I've had problems with interfaces. You may need to connect multiple interfaces to see which one works. So in this example, Gigabit 001 is actually the inside interface even though I configured gigabit zero slash zero slash zero as the inside interface. What I'm gonna do now is delete the interfaces. I'm gonna use gigabit ethernet zero zero one on the inside and gigabit zero zero two on the outside. So even though we're going to configure gigabit 000 as the inside interface or trusted interface, we are actually using gigabit 001 for the inside. And for the outside, we're gonna use gigabit 002. So pings are succeeding from the network automation container. Let's see if it can ping google.com. That is now working. So I can ping Google through the SRX. On the SRX, can I ping the NAT cloud? Yes, I can. Can I ping google.com? Yes, I can. So I've successfully configured version 17 of the SRX to allow the network automation container to get to the internet. The configuration is very similar to previous videos, except be aware about the interface numbers. They don't match up to the interfaces on the SRX. So notice this interface is actually gigabit 001 in GNS3, and this interface is actually gigabit 002 in GNS3. Once you get round to these problems, it works fine. I struggled for a long time to get this working. I'm hoping that this video saves you a lot of time. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.